In this video, I want to discuss an issue with the glide slope signal you can have where there is mountainous terrain. This is a flight into Bumitat and it's um, 1,800 feet above the ground, or 1,700 feet set here. Um, and what will happen is that the glide slope signal, once it starts to come into view, it will go down and the diamond will go down and then it will start to go up again. Now, this is not necessarily an issue depending how you intercept the glide slope in the localizer. So with this flight, everything went correctly and I will just uh, run it and we'll, we'll talk through it to see what is happening. So at the moment, we are uh, slightly high uh, before I used the speed brake, uh, which is why I selected flap 1 to get rid of VLS and I uh, kept the high speed here to make sure that the aircraft is flying a little bit below the glide slope. You cannot see the glide slope yet, it's not valid yet because we're not uh, close enough to the localizer. Um, but uh, soon the glide slope will start to become alive and you will see what I was talking about earlier. Okay, so we're in uh, open descent and the speed is still selected and uh, soon I will manage the speed, there it goes, and select a lower vertical speed to let the aircraft slow down. Now watch what happens as I turn final here. Uh, we are approaching our uh, set altitude here and there's Lockstar. So you notice that before, if I go back a little bit, I only armed the localizer and not approach, so glide slope is not armed. And this is very important in this particular airfield because what will happen, there's log star. Now watch the glide slope signal as we turn the corner, then it suddenly uh, starts to come down where that goes. So here's the glide slope signal, down it goes, and now suddenly it goes up again even though we're keeping more or less the same descent rate. And, th and this behavior is uh, probably due to uh, the glide slope signal being deflected off terrain. It always does that and there's no traffic near the antenna of the glide slope. And so that's not the reason why it, uh, uh, the signal behaves like this. It's, it, 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 it does this every single day. And it's very important to keep this in mind. So it's not an issue like if you stay below the glide slope and also if you arm localizer first, because it will not uh, capture that signal. So now uh, here we will soon be established on the localizer. Now we can arm the, the glide slope and it will just fly the ILS as normal. Now, I have another video to show what will happen if you don't arm only the localizer, uh, but if you actually arm approach, so it will arm the glide slope also. Uh, on top of that, and what if you are not on the glide slope, but slightly above it, or um, actually on the glide slope signal itself, it will gi give the same effect. So let me load this video now. Right, so here's the other video. And everything will happen very quickly. It's filmed from the uh, from the right-hand seat in this case. This was a flight with a direct entry captain. I th believe it was even his first day in uh, flying in Vietnam, and then uh, this all happened. So uh, this, even though uh, I've been um, flying uh, in, uh, flying into Bumitol many many times, uh, this issue never happened before, and it completely took me by surprise also. So it's good to make a video about it to kind of warn other people about this issue we're having in this particular airport. There are some other airports where there are similar issues like in Dalat and to some extent Plaikou also and uh, possibly uh, anywhere else in the world. So what I will do is I'll just run this video, uh, have a good look at uh, uh, PFD and uh, see if you can notice anything out of the ordinary. So here it goes. Okay, so that all happened very quickly. So let's go back and have a look at it again. And we'll just dissect it uh, piece by piece. So at the moment we are 
Um, just about to turn final, we are a bit on the high side, so a high vertical speed is set to make sure we don't end up above the glide slope. The uh, speed, of course, is going to run away with that high vertical speed, so the speed break is selected here. So uh, energy management wise, everything is fine here. But what is not fine is the glide slope signal. At the moment, approach is armed, so both the localizer and glide slope signal, they are armed to, uh, to be captured. And um, the glide slope will soon be, mo uh, will be moving downward. So let me run the video now. Now here's lock star. So once the aircraft in is in lock star, only after that, it can intercept the glide slope. Okay, so there we go further. So here goes the glide slope signal and it moves in very quickly. So down it goes. It goes into glide slope star right now, but knowing from the previous video, we know that soon the glide slope signal will actually start to move upwards. Now at the moment we have a very high vertical speed set still from previously set 1,800 feet a minute. And we're not high, we're actually on the glide slope exactly here. Speed break is still selected, so this is not an issue. But what will happen now is that the glide slope signal will move upwards and it will pull the nose with it. Now watch what happens. So here goes to look at the vertical speed. It suddenly goes up a lot from 1,800 feet a minute down to 1,800 feet a minute up in a very short amount of time. Let me go back a, bit, a little bit again to show that. Okay, so here we go. The glide slope signal moves up. It pulls the nose with it and ceiling glide slope star, and then it will shove the nose down again to make sure it uh, keeps flying on that glide slope signal. And we, because the speed is a bit higher, we lower the gear early. But if I look, if I go back again to this moment where it has that fluctuation, now have a look at um, the lower display here. It will give you a warning. There you go, G load. If I go back a little bit, so it's a bit hard to see, but um, it will it pulled a g-force of uh, 1.6 g uh, total uh, for the uh, largest amount recorded 1.6 g here. Now um, that it's still within the limits, the flaps are selected, so it's not outside of limitations uh, with 1.6 g. But uh, you could definitely feel it. It, it, it felt like uh, sitting in a fighter jet uh, going around a quick corner and uh, definitely not comfortable comfortable for the passengers um, and it's uh, you know it's easy to over overload um, the the g limit here uh, with those flaps selected so it's it's definitely not something you want to do so we're running the video again so it climbs very high 1000 feet a minute 1800 feet a minute up and goes down again so now how to solve this so going back to the previous video so here's the previous video again so here in this case, we only have lock selected. So y you can easily, you can solve this in two different ways. You you make sure that you have a level segment when you turn final here, and then you can arm, can arm approach. If you don't think you will be able to do that, then you can select uh, lock first. And you can of course always select lock first, but then don't forget to arm the approach later because it all will happen pretty quickly. So. Okay, that was it. I hope you learned something and see you next time.